years in LEGO games, we have had an absolute abundance of characters. Ranging from superheroes to big figs to pedestrians to dinosaurs to celebrities, gonk droids, penguins and cows. I mean, I think it's fair to say we've had a wide variety of characters from, well, <laughs> a wide variety of franchises. To those characters who are an absolute pain to unlock and the sheer amount of henchmen. And obviously to them overpowered characters. Which were obviously great fun to use. However today we will be going on to the complete other end of the spectrum and today we will be looking at the top 10 most strangest and obscure characters in LEGO. Oh yeah, and cue the music. So, hello, hello, hello there guys, I'm Ruby Eagle and I do lots of LEGO content on my channel, so if you do like what you see, feel free to subscribe, it is up to you, but I do highly recommend. Oh, and a like would be greatly appreciated, only if you do go to enjoy though, I do hope you go to enjoy, but anyway, let's get into the rules and regulations. So yes, the rules are fairly simple. If the character is strange and obscure, it makes it into the list. And yes, these are in a particular order. Now, the characters can be strange in either a good way or a bad way. But a strange character at the end of the day is a fantastic character. So let's get into the top 10 strangest characters in LEGO games. So coming in at number 10 on the list is a strange one. It's 1966 Batman from LEGO Batman 3. Now this is such a peculiar character to add into a modern LEGO game in 2014. It's the Batman from, well, 1966. Now say what you want about the TV show, it isn't like the Batman we have today, especially not the new Batman. And this variation of Batman was really strange to be added into LEGO Batman 3, but I'm so glad they added it in. They didn't add it into LEGO DC Supervillains, which really disappointed me because I love Batman 1966. When you're attacking enemies, the classic punchlines come up and the sound effects. And not to forget the level that you play through to unlock the 1966 characters. The level is, well, it's fantastic, especially the car chase scene because that's how they used to shoot them back in the day. Now, though, LEGO Batman 3 is not up there with the greatest of LEGO games, mainly down to the open world. It was just a little bit disappointing after getting the stunning Gotham in LEGO Batman 2, and then in LEGO Batman 3, we got these ugly lantern corpse planets. However, though, it gave us Batman 1966 and all the other 1966 characters, so LEGO Batman 3, you win on that part, because Adam West Batman... <laughs> is great. And just to let you know, from here on out, the characters get stranger and stranger and stranger. Anyway, let's move on to number nine. So coming in at number nine is Lego Indiana Jones from the Complete Saga. <laughs> So LEGO Indiana Jones was added into the Complete Saga to promote the next LEGO game back in the day, which would have been LEGO Indiana Jones The Original Adventures, an absolute fantastic LEGO game. And what you had to do to unlock the character was watch the trailer, and then you got to purchase him for around 50,000 stuffs. And in retrospective, LEGO Indiana Jones is a strange character to get in a Star Wars game because he's an archaeologist from the past and he's now been put way ahead in the future with lightsabers and blasters. Now, I do love LEGO Indy in the Complete Saga because he's so different to everybody else in the game. You're just there whipping B1 battle droids, shooting without a blaster. He's fantastic in the game. And you may notice, if you look at the top where the character icon is, that is actually the LEGO Indiana Jones minifigure. But in the game of the Complete Saga, they actually use Han Solo's face on Indiana Jones. Mind you, it doesn't matter because they're the same actor. And I know one of you sat there are probably thinking, well, in LEGO Indiana Jones 1, the original adventures, you can unlock Han Solo as a playable character. Yes, you can. So we'll just put both of them on this position. And just before we move on, one thing I would love to see, say the next LEGO game is the new LEGO Indiana Jones game because of the new indie film, I really hope in the Skywalker Saga we can unlock LEGO Indiana Jones, that would be absolutely amazing. Anyway, let's move on to number 8. So at number 8 is a really strange crossover and the character comes from LEGO Batman 3 and that is the Green Lantern. So to be honest I have no idea why this character is in a LEGO Batman game but I'm so glad they added it. In. So the Green Lantern is basically what it says on the tin, it's Daffy Duck with Green Lantern's ring. And if you're sat there wondering where this actually originated from, I actually did some research and it actually came from the Duck Dodgers TV series back in the early 2000s with Daffy Duck. 
And the episode on which he becomes the Green Loon Turn is episode 9 from season 1. You can actually get it on Amazon Prime if you're interested. And he basically finds the ring in the dry cleaners. I have no idea why, but it's a fantastic character. So the Green Loon Turn is very, very similar to the Green Lantern in Lego Batman 3 and all the other Lantern characters from Lego Batman 3. However, he does have a different moveset. When he actually slams on the ground, he slams a giant duck which is pretty cool. But the main highlight for this character is when you're playing through the game, just hearing Daffy Duck's voice is amazing, especially when you're doing the quest for the Green Loon Turn. It's just Daffy Duck, it's fantastic. And that's why I love the Green Lantern so much, because the Green Lantern ring can literally attach itself to anything. I mean, in LEGO DC Superlands, you have Bidig. Basically, Bidig is a red squirrel with the Green Lantern ring. <laughs> That is amazing. Anyway, moving on to number seven. Coming in at number seven is Kevin Smith from Lego Batman 3. Now, Kevin Smith truly is a strange character to add into a Lego game. However, he did write a few DC comics and he is widely known as a comedy actor and also a director. Now, Kevin Smith is actually a massive role in Lego Batman 3. A lot of his quests are in the Batcave and that's how you unlock Kevin Smith and loads of other characters through doing his quests. Now, Kevin Smith went to write a few Batman comics and Green Arrow comics, and it's great to see that Stephen Amell from the Arrow TV show actually voiced Green Arrow within Lego Batman 3, which is wicked, and there's also a DLC for Arrow. And you may be sat there wondering, what does Kevin Smith do in Lego Batman 3? Well, basically, all Kevin Smith can do is shatter glass. He's not like Stan Lee and has loads of superpowers and he's absolutely amazing, but it's great to see Kevin Smith in Lego Batman 3, alongside Conan O'Brien. Though he's not playable, he does have a few cameos within the game. So yeah, Kevin Smith is in Lego Batman 3, a really strange character, but yet again, a great character to be added. So no one's complaining. Anyway, moving on to number 6. So rolling its way into number 6 is Butterball from Lego Avengers. And yes, that is a great question. Who is Butterball? So Butterball is the definition of strange. Basically, he was a fry cook and then he became invulnerable and invincible and immortal. So he cannot be defeated. He's literally unstoppable and he cannot gain or lose weight due to his really fast metabolism that makes him stay in the shape that he is. That is Butterball. Though that sounds really strange, he basically is unstoppable, and I kind of dig the concept for the character. He's out of shape, and he doesn't really have any skills in fighting, but he is a really good superhero, because at the end of the day, he's unstoppable. And in LEGO Avengers, they perfectly portray this character. So basically, in the LEGO game, he's really clumsy. If you jump up in the air, he'll fall on the ground, and sometimes when you're running with him, he will trip over. They perfectly capture the character. And Butterball within the Marvel comics was basically used as a human shield because nothing could penetrate through him. He was invincible. And in LEGO Avengers, he is actually invincible. He has the silver hearts, very similar to Superman, and he has one of the most strongest thunderclaps within the game. You can't really call it a thunderclap. It's more of a pan clap. I guess that's what you call it. Basically, in summary, he slams two pans together and it causes a massive shockwave that literally destroys everything in its path. It's a pretty wicked move. I think that's a prime example of a strange character. I mean, he slams two fine pans together that causes a massive shockwave. I mean, that is strange, but also wicked. To be fair, I do want to try it now, but I don't recommend trying. Now, number five is something truly cursed and strange, and I'm putting like an entire game on this spot, and that is Lego Movie 2's characters, well, some of them. I mean, look what they've done to Wonder Woman. They've massacred her. <laughs> Mind you, you do have the regular Wonder Woman, but still. I mean, I just think these are cursed characters in LEGO games. I can't see the LEGO friend design minifigure in a LEGO game. It just doesn't work. It's... It's truly strange. I mean, to be fair, hats off to TT Games. I do think they captured how these minifigures would work in a Lego game perfectly, but it just, it doesn't feel right. But I have to admit, I really do love the Metal Beard character. I don't even know how to explain this, especially when he's riding a horse. It's amazing. <laughs> and same with this character. I don't know how to explain this strange Unikitty puppy Sonic looking thing. But yeah, Lego Movie 2 does have a bit of a strange character roster. Mind it's got some really cool variations for characters such as Batman. And it also has some disappointing characters in the game such as Superman. He can't even fly or use any of his abilities in the game and Flash can't even run fast. So, 
what's the point? But yeah, LEGO Movie 2's character roster really is a mix. It's got really strange characters, it's got some cool variations and some disappointing characters. It truly is a mix of everything. So I'm just going to put at number 5 the entirety of LEGO Movie 2, just because it has a lot of strange characters. Now coming in at number 4, I have no idea how to pronounce this one, is Mr. Mazikilis Picklick? Is that how you say it? Just seriously have a go at trying to read that. It seriously is harder than it looks, and the main reason why this character actually got added into LEGO games as a fun fact is because Arthur Parsons, one of the main directors of TT Games, actually could pronounce his name, so he put him in the game. <laughs> And Gilbert Gottfried's voice for Mr. Mazikilis Picklick is fantastic. He really has some of the best voice lines in LEGO Batman 3 and in LEGO DC Supervillains, and he's a blast to play. He's an imp from the fifth dimension, and he's really strange with his abilities, but really fun to play. And basically, this imp is really, really powerful. He's got loads of abilities, and basically, the only way to defeat him is to trick him into saying his name backwards. I mean, there's no way I'm defeating him because I ain't pronouncing that word backwards, and I don't think he can neither. <laughs> and if you want, you can have a pause here and read up about Mr. Mazikilis Pickley. Is that right? So coming in at the final three is Fishmonger and Damage Control from LEGO Batman 1 and LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 1. Now these characters are the definition of random and that's why they're being put on here. They're just strange because they're so random, especially Damage Control in LEGO Marvel Super Heroes 1. The LEGO Marvel 1 character roster is flooded with lots of superheroes from the comics and each one is relevant and then you've just got Damage Control. And you maybe sat there thinking, what can he do? Well, you probably already know what he can do. He can do nothing. He can just attack regularly. Mind you, he can defeat Red Hulk in a one-to-one -one fight. Trust me, I've witnessed it. And then we have the Fishmonger from LEGO Batman 1. He's very similar, but the Fishmonger is a little bit cooler. I mean, just look at the stride of the Fishmonger. He walks down Gotham streets with so much pride. I definitely think he has one of the coolest walk animations throughout every single LEGO game. So yeah, the Fishmonger and Damage Control, really random characters, and same with the Milkman in LEGO Harry Potter. So I'm putting them at number three. And now for the final two characters, we're gonna get weird. And I mean weird, weird. <laughs> at number two is Bat Cow. So yeah, Bat Cow isn't made up. He is actually part of the Bat family and he is pretty powerful. He can kick people and headbutt them. Mind you, he's a little bit slow at attacking, except from his kick. His kick is powerful. And it's probably because of all them calf raises. <laughs> See what I did there? So yeah, <laughs> I don't know what else you want me to say, it's Bat Cow. Bat Cow is Bat Cow. Now coming in at number one is the pure pinnacle of strange characters in LEGO games. And it comes from LEGO DC Super Villains, and that is Egg Fu, otherwise known as Chang Tzu. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> this is strange, I mean this is the pinnacle of it. It's basically Humpty Dumpty in a robotic suit, which will cost you 500,000 studs by the way. So basically it was a guy who inhabited an egg flesh mutation that caused him to become a giant egg and now he's in a robotic suit. You can have a read up here and pause it and read up about this egg food Chang Tzu character. He really is strange. So yeah, the character is pretty strong. He has super jump, he can get around the map pretty quickly, he fires eggs out of a can and he just looks really creepy. So yeah, one could say he's an excellent character. Yeah, that, that was bad. But anyway, thank you for watching today's video. If you are new around here, and just before you go, if you did go to enjoy, please go to drop a like. That will show lots of support to me. That's only if you did go to enjoy, though. And if you like my content, feel free to subscribe. I do lots of other LEGO videos like this. So yeah, if you want, go and click on that playlist and that will send you to all my other LEGO videos. They are really enjoyable and fun to watch. But anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you all have a fantastic week and I'll see you all in a bit. Adios.